It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? Hello, Professor Dawkins. How are you? I'm Ben Stein. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. How are you? Fine, thank you. You have, uh, you have written that uh, God is a psychotic delinquent invented by mad, deluded people. No, I didn't say quite that. I said something rather better than that. Oh, well, please tell us what you said. Please tell us what you um, said. I, well, I would have to read it from, from, from the book. No, please. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. How about, how about if people believed in a God of infinite lovingness and kindness and forgiveness and generosity, sort of like the modern day God? Why spoil it for them? Oh, um... Why not just let them have their fun I'm and enjoy happy. it? I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I, I write a book. People can read it if, if they want to. Um, I believe that it is a liberating thing to free yourself from primitive superstition. So religion is a primitive superstition? Oh, I, I think it is, yes. So uh, you believe it's liberating to uh, tell people that there is no God? I think a lot of people, when they give up God, feel a great sense of release uh, and freedom. Why do you think that? I mean, what's your well, dad, what's your scientist, what's your dad? I think, well, I've had a lot of, of letters saying that, and I've... There are eight billion people in the world, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dawkins. Know, know, How many yeah, letters yeah, have you had? No, I haven't, I haven't done that. That's quite, quite true. Professor Dawkins seemed so convinced that God doesn't exist that I wondered if he would be willing to put a number on it. Well, it's hard to put a figure on it, but but I I, I mean I put it as something like you know ninety nine percent against or something. Well, how do you know it's ninety nine percent against? Say in that ninety seven. No, I did. You asked me to put a figure on it, and I it, I'm not comfortable putting a figure on it. I think it's I I just think it's very unlikely. What? Well, but you couldn't put a number on it. No, of course not. No. So it, it could would be forty nine percent. Well, I it would be. I mean, I I think it's 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 unlikely, but but I but, and it's quite far from 50 percent. How do you know? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I put an argument in the book. Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um, by a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. And what was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right, how did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, 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 no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. else. What do you think is the possibility that, there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics? or in, well, in evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. Mm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but okay. that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. So the, the Hebrew God, the God of the Old Testament, he doesn't exist in your view? Um, Certainly, I mean, that would be a very unpleasant pro prospect. And no, no. Uh, the Trin Holy Trinity of the no, New Testament, nothing, that doesn't Nothing exist. like that. Do you believe in any of the uh, Hindu gods? 
like this. How can you ask such a question? You don't, right? How could I? I mean, why why would I, given that I don't believe in any others? You don't believe in the Muslim God? No. I mean, why do you even need to ask? Well, I just wanted to be sure. So you don't believe in any God anywhere? Any God anywhere would be completely incompatible with, 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 with anything that I've said. In, in, I, I assume. Yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure you don't okay. believe in any God anywhere. No. What if you, if after you died, you ran into God? And he said, what have you been doing, Richard? I mean, what have you been doing? I've been trying well, to be nice to you. Yeah. I gave you a multi-million dollar paycheck yeah. over and over again with your book, and look what you did. Bertrand Russell was, had that point put to him, and he said um, something like, Sir, why did you take such pains to hide yourself? But if the intelligent design people are right, God isn't hidden. We may even be able to encounter God through science, if we have the freedom to go there. Dawkins told the crowd they should ridicule religious people. Let me quote him, he says, mock them, ridicule them in public. Their beliefs are insane, therefore they should be ridiculed with contempt. Years in the future, this may serve as a reminder, like a verbal time capsule, honor your treasure, meant for the minds that denied in the past, ignoring the signs every time that we asked you to listen. You dismissed us consistently, and now you're living out prophecy, first and witness to the times and the miseries, no denying all the signs and conspiracies report a hard time and urge you to listen implore you to think to make the right decision laughing aside you display the devil's advocate every time you heard the truth you turn the opposite rejected anything that's turned against your politics convince yourself that you were good by thinking positive always the optimist are used to confident that ignorance is bliss during the apocalypse smack dab in the middle of the storyline slap in your face shift in your paradigm switch in your mind for the memories you blocked out if Information that you knew was true but locked out Conversations that you wish could be repeated Warning calls that you wish you would have heeded Thought all those Christians were living in denial But now you do anything to understand the Bible Every day triggers all memories, reminders Remaining remnants remembered by survivors Each together from the fragments of a quagmire Lost souls gathered hungry around a campfire Brought together through the karma recollections Torn apart by the warnings that they questioned Looking back they knew this day was unavoidable They hated God and racist sin whenever possible Gave control to everything they knew was evil Sold their souls and now they're living like medieval A whole world without laws or morality Living in poverty and running from reality I had a picture of missed opportunities All the what ifs and lost possibilities Cities burn like a giant crematorium Mountaintops collapse like an accordion Wars are rumbling, governments crumbling Storm clouds gathering round, hear the thundering Smack dab in the middle of the storyline Slap in your face, shift in your paradigm Switching your mind for the memories you blocked out the Information that you knew was true but locked out Conversations that you wish could be repeated Warning calls that you wish you would have heeded Thought all those Christians were living in denial But now you do anything to understand the Bible Anarchy reigns in the streets, in the alleyways No escape from the pain in the end of days Left alone with no internet or telephone Cities and graveyards crumbling catacombs Apocalyptic wickedness and pestilence Epidemics and afflictions, malevolence No protection, no government or military Just infections and really full cemeteries Catastrophes on another level, biblical Miserable when the locust swarm is visible Turn and run from the state, you knew the outcome Acting dumb and ignorant and asking how come A social justice warrior with your politics Emotional, convince yourself with willing ignorance Way too late, no excuse could ever save face And now you're living in a world without a safe space Smack dab in the middle of the storyline Slap in your face, shift in your paradigm Switching your mind for the memories you blocked out the Information that you knew was true but locked out Conversations that you wish could be repeated Warning calls that you wish you would have heeded Thought all those Christians were living in denial But now you do anything to understand the Bible What if you're wrong? Well, what if I'm wrong? I mean, anybody could be wrong. What if you're wrong about the great juju at the bottom of the sea?
everyday evidence proving that the moon is transparent. I mean, you can see stars through the moon sometimes, as you can see here. And this right here would be impossible if the moon was a solid rock that you could land on. Remembering that you believe it's a solid rock that you could land on because they show you this bullcrap here. Which has been proven time and time again that it's nothing but a hoax. And the only time that science can duplicate a lunar eclipse is by giving you a computer generated video of how one ball moves in front of another ball to form a shadow on that ball. And you've never seen any of this with your own eyes. You've seen it on TV or you read it in a book or you heard it from NASA. And therefore disregarding your inner wisdom, your common sense, your basic instinct that tells you when you look up at the moon, you see a transparent moon. You see the sky through the moon because it's a transparent moon. And now the first thing some of you flat earthers said when I posted the eclipse video was, oh, it's the moon. It's in. The, it's, it's just the new moon. It's invisible. That's why it blocks the sun. You can't see it before it gets to the sun or after. But if you could see the stars through the transparent moon, then you would see the sun shine through the transparent moon. Now, come on, people. God gave you a brain. Use it. That eclipse was not the moon passing in front of the sun, regardless of how much awake you think you are. Now as for you globe earthers, so you can choose to believe the solid rock sun reflection bullcrap because that's what they told you. Or you can believe your inner wisdom, your common sense and your basic instinct, which is what you see with your own eyes. But in the end, the only difference between globe earthers and flat earthers is flat earthers take it upon faith that the men who wrote the Bible are Telling the truth. Globe earthers take it upon faith that the men who wrote the science books are telling the truth. I'm not gonna stand here, present some egghead scientific argument based on fact. And I can't change their mind. I won't change my mind because I don't have to. I won't change my mind on anything, regardless of the facts that are set out before me. Mac, look, you're wasting our time. You're not gonna get us to not believe. And why is that? Because the smartest scientists in the entire world all agree that it's real. I'm glad you brought that up. Because, Mr. Reynolds, science is a liar sometimes. Oh, this is insane, you fool. I'm a fool because I have more faith in the saints that wrote the Bible? Yeah, because you just read the words of a bunch of guys that you never met, and you just take it on faith that everything they wrote was true. Mm. And what makes you think what your scientists are writing is any more truer than my saints? Because there are volumes of proven data, numbers, you know, figures. Have you poured through the data yourself, the numbers, the figures? Well, no, I mean, no. Oh, interesting. So let me get this straight, Mr. Reynolds. You get your information from a book written by men you've never met. And you take their words as truth based on a willingness to believe, a desire to accept. A leap of, oof, dare I say it, <laughs> faith? Ah, come on, come on. Look, I mean, I don't even know how I'm supposed to respond to that. Like, ah, come on. That is a, that's a false equivalency. Just answer the question, Mr. Reynolds. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I rest my case. Well, that got me. Yeah. Thank you, Frankie.